Hi guys, welcome to Lens City. My name is Daniel and in this video I'll be teaching you biology. Today's topic is organization of life. So today we are talking about organization of life. The organization of life is simply defined as the existence of life from a single celled organism to multicellular organisms with complex forms and different functions. So we are just talking about how life is organized from cells and onto the other levels of life, into the various levels of life. So I want to talk about the first level of organization down to the fourth level. So the first level of organization of life is a cell. And cell is simply defined as the functional and structural unit of life. And that is the first and the lowest level of organization of life. Now, all living things, plants and animals are composed of cells. So, cells have their functions and that, that they perform in the body of a living organism. So, we have white blood cells, red blood cells, those ones are found in animals. We have parenchyma cells, xylem cells, those ones are found in plants. So, we have various other examples of cells. Now, this first level of organization of life, which is the cell, there are some organisms which exist at this level. An example is amoeba, paramecium, euglena, those are other examples. So there are organisms that exist at the cell level. And these organisms are one-celled organisms called unicellular organisms. What that means is one cell is a whole organism. So there are organisms that they are just a single cell and they are existing as a fully functional organism. Examples are amoeba, paramecium, euglena, and so on and so forth. Now let's move on to the second level of organization, which is called the tissue. A tissue is a collection of cells which are similar in structure and perform similar functions. And they are found around the same position in the body in which they exist. So when you put some cells together that are performing a similar function, that they are also similar in structure and they are found in the same position, we have a tissue. So we have examples of tissues as blood, we have phloem tissue, we have cholenchyma, and so on and so forth. An example of an organism that exists at the tissue level is hydra. Hydra exists at the tissue level, functions as a fully functional organism at the tissue level. So the next level of organization, which is the third level of organization, is organ. So an organ is simply the collection of different tissues that perform a common function. So some organs could perform more than one function. We have various examples of organs. We have kidney, we have stems, we have leaves, brain, spinal cord, taste bud, ovaries, urinary bladder, and so on and so forth. So all of these are examples of organs, and some of them could perform more than one function. For example, the leaves help to lose water, excess water in a plant, and also, the leaves could store food in a plant. So those are different functions. That is the one organ performing more than one function in the same plant. Now let's move on to the next level of organization, which is the fourth level. And that is a system or organ system. A system is simply a set of organs or a collection of organs which cooperate to carry out one vital function of life. So for example, we have the digestive system, which is a collection of organs such as the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the pancreas, the duodenum, the ileum, the large intestine, and the anus. So those are multiple organs working together to perform the function of digestion. So we have other examples of systems such as respiratory system, the excretory system, and the reproductive system, so on and so forth. Now let's move on to complexity of organization in higher organisms. So the advancement in the evolutionary trend of both plants and animals show that there is a gradual complexity in the organization from one level to the next level. So what that means is, as we move from the least complex to the most complex organism, we have gradual complexity. We have increase in complexity that is gradual from level to level. So from unicellular organisms to multicellular organisms, their body shows 
different levels of complexity. So their bodies have bodies of complex organisms have parts performing different functions. They have specialized parts made up of tissues, organs, and systems. So we have some organisms that perform at a higher and a more complex level than some other organisms. So they have separated and specialized parts which perform different functions. So now I want to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of complexity in a living organism. So, so the advantages of complexity. Number one, there is specialization of various cells. So what that means is each cell has a function it's carrying out or performing in the body of a complex organism. For example, a complex organism would, could have nerve sensory cells specifically for performing the function of detecting stimuli. So what, that, what I'm just trying to explain is in complex organism, each cell is specialized for various function. Now the next one, which is division is allowed for efficient exploitation of the environment. What that means is each body part of an organism is separated to allow each part efficiently, efficiently make use of the space and the body parts, the large size which a complex organism possesses. Then the next one is complexity leads to adaptation to environment. It increases more the adaptation in a more complex organism. So when a, an organism is more complex, it's going to have more parts and more features that are adapted to survive in its environment than a less, less complex organism. Then another advantage is that it leads to an increase in size of organism. So the more complex an organism is, relatively it will be larger in size than a less complex organism. Another advantage of complexity is that in unicellular organisms, all activities stop when another activity is about to take place. But in complex organisms, all activities do not have to stop because another activity is taking place. For example, if reproduction is taking place in a complex organism, it doesn't mean digestion has to be stopped for, it to take, for the reproduction to take place. So complex organisms have the ability to have multiple activities running and moving on at the same time. Now let's move on to the disadvantages of complexity. The first one is that individual cells are not capable of existing independently. So what that means is the cells depend on each other for activities. So that's the only way they can exist. Different cells depend on each other so that's to function. Doesn't mean they are not performing a particular function, but still, different cells still have to depend on one another to perform effectively. So that's a disadvantage of complexity. Another one is area to volume ratio diminishes or, de or decreases. So what that means is, the area to volume ratio, as, we, as, it, as the more an organism gets complex, the more the area to volume ratio diminishes. Then another one is, the higher the organism, the, the more the ability to regenerate decreases. So the, higher, the more complex an organism, the more the ability to regenerate decreases, gets smaller. So a more complex organism will have a lower regenerative ability than a less complex organism. Thanks for joining us. See you in the next lesson.